Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf. Normally I do a tag on Wednesday, I know, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of relief not doing a tag this week. Instead, I want to talk about noble women. And no, I don't mean women from an aristocratic background or whatever, or queens, but I mean women who won the Nobel Prize for Literature. Um, this, the idea for this video came to me um, thanks to Kendra Winchester. Um, I will leave all, as always, every information links is down below in, in the description box. Anyway, Kendra Winchester has a booktube channel, of course. Uh, you are all subscribed to that already, so I don't have to urge you to do so. But she also runs a podcast together with a friend of hers. Um, it's the Reading Women podcast, where they discuss books uh, by and about women. They have a certain theme every month. Um, they have author interviews. Uh, so if you are like me, like to listen to bookish podcasts and you've never heard of the Reading Women podcast, you should definitely check that out. But anyway, they also have a reading challenge over the year with uh, several prompts. And uh, in June, they, it was their birthday, they were two years old, the podcast then, I mean. Um, and uh, so many videos were made about certain prompts. But even though June is over, uh, the challenge uh, for the Reading Women is for the whole year. And one of the prompts was read a book by a female um, Nobel Prize winner. Um, I, I didn't get around to make this video in June, but I thought it's worth doing it anyway, even in July. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the women, four to be precise, that I want to recommend to you who are Nobel Prize winners. And maybe... Uh, not that familiar to you. So I'm not talking about Toni Morrison or Doris Lessing, uh, but women who might, yeah, like I said, who might not be in the focus that much anymore. Um, I will leave also a, a complete list of all the women who won the Nobel Prize for Literature down below, all 14 of them out of the 114 Nobel Prizes since 1901. No comment on that, but I want to focus on four. And the first one is a Swedish author, author Selma Lagerlöf, um, who was the first woman to ever win the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1909. Um, uh, she is a Swedish author. She died in 1940, and she wrote mainly children's book and I, books, and I, I really love them. And the one I will uh, link down below is The Wonderful Adventures of Niels. Um, Niels is a 14-year-old boy, and then he meets an elf, and he gets, you know, made into a tiny being, and on the back of a goose, he flies over the the land, and he meets people, and he sees things. It's it's just an uh, incredibly endearing story. Um, the, the, the drawings are wonderful as well, but it's also quite educational. You know, Niels, he, he learns a lot about geography and about the people and about history um, during his journeys. So if you are into children's books or if you have somebody you want to gift a children's book uh, to, then Selma Lagerlöf's The Wonderful Adventures of Niels, by the way, translated into English from the Swedish by Velma uh, Swanston Howard um, is is a wonderful pick. Um, I, actually, all Selma Lagerlöf's books are wonderful if you are into children's books. For the next noble noble woman, <laughs> we stay in the north, so to speak, um, because we go to Norway, um, and of course, I'm talking about Sigurd Unset, the Norwegian Nobel Prize winner for literature in 1938. Sigurd Unset. Uh, lived in the beginning of the 20th century. She died just after the Second World War, and her m most famous book is a trilogy called Kristin Lovrenstatter. Um, the book is historical fiction. It is set in the 14th century, and over the course of three books, we follow Kristin, uh, our main character, quite a headstrong, a headstrong young woman, um, and it, the novel starts off when uh, Kristin is supposed to marry um, a man who will bring, you know, land and wealth and everything. But as stories go, she falls in love with the wrong man, a fallen knight, Erland. Um, and uh, that that's the setup of the first book. Now, you can buy uh, Kirsten Lovranstatter in the trilogy in one book, in a new translation by Tina uh, Nonelli. 
which is about 1100 pages, but that might be too much of a commitment to ask. So I would say start with the first book and see whether you like it. Um, it it's a, a, a really rich historical fiction. You learn a lot about Norway in the 14th century. Um, the relationship of uh, Christine with her father is at the center uh, of, of the books. You, you might say that's why the book is called Christine Lavrans Daughter, because that means Christine, the daughter of Lavrans. Lavrans is the name, obviously, of her father. So that is a very important relationship. Um, Christine is the only daughter who uh, survived after after all of her previous siblings have either been uh, stillborn or died very young. So that is a central thing. But what I what I personally loved most about the novels is the rich and detailed uh, picture you get of the life in 14th century. Uh, Norway. So that is my second recommendation. Not maybe quite as, you know, unpopular um, because it, the, the books have been translated into almost a hundred languages and is still one of the most read novel um, in the world. But you might not have read it and I can certainly recommend it if you're into uh, Nobel women and historical fiction, then Christine Lavranstatter is a very good choice. And then we make a time jump of almost 30 years because the next Nobel Prize woman was awarded the prize in 1966 and that's a German poet, Nellie Sachs. Um, she was born in 1901 and died in 1970. She was um, a Jewish poet and she fled uh, Germany during the National uh, Socialist uh, uh, regime to Sweden. So we sort of traveled back up north um, and she during her lifetime, for, for many years, she didn't get the recognition that she deserved, but now um, her poems are uh, published and collected, and the collection I'm uh, showing you here is collected poems uh, between 1944 and 1969, um, translated by four people. I will leave their names down below. And Nellie Sachs' poetry is very raw, very emotional. She, uh, many of her poems deal with the Holocaust and the experiences of um, the Second World War, um, immigration, um, and they are, they are not an easy read, but they are beautiful. So if you are at all into poetry um, and you might not have heard of Nellie Sex, you should definitely check her out. And the fourth and last novel woman I want to feature here um, is another time jump, um, and I'm talking about a South African recipient of the Nobel Prize 1991, and that is Nadine Gordimer. Uh, Nadine Gordimer was a very prolific um, white South African writer. Uh, she published um, over 10 novels, but also short story collections and essay collections. Um, she was um, involved in the anti-apartheid movement uh, back then, Many of her books, Burger's Daughter, for instance, uh, uh, was banned during the apartheid regime. Um, uh, she died, at, I'm not, not sure whether I mentioned that already, but she died four years ago in 2014. And the book I want to feature here uh, is A Sport of Nature, which she published in 1987. Um, it follows, it's a sort of a, um, a fictionalized account of an after apartheid uh, South Africa. Keep in mind, it was published in 1987, so during the apartheid. And the main character is a young girl when the novel opens, Hilela. Uh, and we follow her journey during the 60s, 70s and 80s. Um, she is um, uh, from a rich, privileged Jewish background, uh, but she's a bit of a misfit. And her family uh, casts her off to be raised by an aunt. Um, and the title, she is sort of a spon considered by her fa family as like a spontaneous mutation, a sport of nature, because she doesn't fit in. Um, uh, it's one of the books of Nadim Godema that I personally love the most. But if you are at all interested in South African writers, and certainly Nadine Godema is worth uh, you know, having a look at her backlist, so you might find other books more appealing, maybe Burger's Daughter, one of the books that was has been banned. Um, but my choice uh, to start with would be uh, The Sport of Nature. Now, these were the four 
noble women that I wanted to feature in this video. Um, please, of course, check out the whole list. And speaking of the whole list, I was thinking of doing um, a read-along uh, of all the uh, one book by all the 14 women winning the Nobel Prize. Let me know whether you might be interested in something like that. Um, because as you know, there will be no Nobel Prize uh, this year, Nobel Prize of Literature this year. So I was thinking if we have 14 and we start uh, just before... Uh, uh, 14 months before next year, so we might uh, just have read all the 14 women before the announcement of the Nobel Prize in, 19, uh, in 2019. But let me know whether this is a project you would be at all interested in uh, for me to do. I would then read one book of a Nobel Prize uh, winning woman a month until uh, next year in October. But let me know. M maybe it's a stupid project. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know whether you read any of the 14 uh, women that won the Nobel Prize. And I'll talk to you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye.